How's it going everyone? In this video, I'm going to go ahead and share with you over 30 amazing hidden features that a lot of people overlooked that Apple didn't tell us. So with that said, let's get started. And yes, timestamps will be in the description down below for your pleasure. Let's start off with a new notification that will notify you in case your charge port is wet. So not only has the notification warning message has been updated, but if we listen closely, it actually plays sound. Take a listen. That is the new warning nowadays. And even if your device is on silent, it'll still play with that loud sound, alerting you to immediately unplug or it could damage your device. Now I already have covered this previously, but whenever you charge your device on the top portion of the screen, it will now show you your charge time. And if you have a pair of AirPods hooked up to your device, you'll now be notified when your AirPods are fully charged, just like you would with the Apple Watch. And when you hook up a pair of AirPods for active noise cancellation, non-active noise cancellation, or even the AirPods Pro second generation, this new window will pop up telling you that you now have charge reminders, the pause and play ability in case you fall asleep listening to something, and camera control using the earbuds. I go over greater detail in that video in the corner you see above if you're curious to find out what additional stuff they added for the AirPods. But while we still have our iPhone hooked up to power, if you go into your settings, and we go into battery, it gives you more information on how long it will take your iPhone to charge to 80% or all the way up to 100% and it will update in real time if you change power wattage with your power adapter. More information about your current battery that your phone has and how this fast charging work and such. Now, since we're in the settings already, setting app, there's also more features that Apple added in the settings app. The first one can be located if you go into general and we go into our software update you now have this new more detail page, which will give you a quick breakdown on everything new on this current OS software update. Additionally, you can now swipe like this to go back where previously you had to make sure you were on the edge. Now you can literally swipe to go back even from the far right. So that's a new updated gesture. Now we're done charging our phone. So I'm gonna put this aside because the search bar is now on the very bottom and now it's more consistent than ever. If we type in CarPlay, it's likely to give us the correct result that we've been asking for. Now, speaking of CarPlay, if you're wondering why your CarPlay isn't taking screenshots whenever you take a screenshot on your device, that's because Apple changed a couple of settings for screenshots. If you go into the general tab and we scroll down to screen capture, not only do we have HDR format option now, but this is where you go in and enable or disable CarPlay screenshots. So if you like to take a screenshot of CarPlay, enable this because it's disabled by default. Now, in the accessibility tab, still in the settings, if you scroll down to the accessibility tab and we go into motion, in the vehicle motion cues right here, this is what you'll activate for motion sickness. This was new on iOS 18, but now you could customize the appearance of that for your motion sickness. And you could preview the colors in real time. So if you like to customize it, now you can. You can also change it to a dynamic look as well. And in real time, it'll show you how that preview will look like. You can also enlarge the dots too if you like to, or include more dots, or all of the above if you're a rebel. Now exiting out of here, let's talk about the homepage. So if you're using an app that supports picture in picture, like YouTube as an example, let's just click on a random video. Bad idea, that'll probably demonetize the channel. So now if we exit out here, we have a new picture in pre picture preview, right? If you enlarge it and we tap on it one more time, you notice that we have more button controls. And these button controls are redesigned to the latest glass design for liquid glass that Apple's promoting. And then if we go into the Apple TV app, and we click on it, Apple is currently experimenting with haptic feedback trailers. So if you actually play this right now, it even tells you right there, haptic trailer. If you hit play, the screen will actually vibrate as the trailer plays. Like whenever he gets in this car and stuff like that, you can actually feel him bucketing, putting on his seat, attaching the steering wheel. It's really interesting. So it's a clear sign that Apple is experimenting with future haptic trailers utilizing the haptic vibrators that's found on modern day iPhones. Now exiting out of here, another app that I receive a couple stealth updates is the music app if we launch the music app and we play like a album that supports wallpaper animations like this if we hit play and you lock your device it continues having an animation even on the log page now back in apple music another new thing that has been changed here is in the library if we go on playlists and you tap these three dots you can now create custom folders right here 
where previously you had to do this on the computer, now you can do it directly off your iPhone. Now let's get out of here and go into the camera app. By launching the camera app, now depending if you're using video or photo, if you swipe up from the bottom bar or over here, you have quick tools as well. And in video, if you do the same thing, you have these two tools now as well. So you have access to these quick tools instead of having to tap up here. You can just swipe up. Now we launched the Note app. The keyboard in the Note app has also been updated. Not only is the haptic feedback different now, whatever you use for swipes to type, I'm just doing random stuff. I'm not doing a complete sentence. Apple has improved the haptic feedback, so now you can feel when you start and when it ends. Additionally, if you use Siri, Siri can now download apps too. Download Vemo. So since I already had this app downloaded, I can still select right here to update. Now the Reminder app also received an update as well. If you select the time for a reminder, you can now select the different time zones. So you can literally search it up right here and look for all around the world, different time zones. Then if you're somebody who's subscribed to the News Plus, by launching the News app from Apple, if you go down to this little search bar, there's now support for puzzles. So you can play little mini puzzle games now. And then if you're ever experiencing troubleshooting problems, the Tips app can quickly diagnose any issues you may be experiencing. So if you scroll down and we type in battery, and let's say we're having issues with our battery, we could do this, click on it, and it'll automatically check our battery life for us or battery conditions. And will give us advices on things we can improve to improve battery life as well. Now, if you're using the message app and you need to send like a video or a footage to somebody, and we hit send, there's now a progress bar on top showing you in real time on how long it will take this video to be sent to them, to load it and send to them. And it will change the color if it's Android, of course it will be green and blue for iOS devices. Now I previously covered the fact that now when using Safari, your design may be different than mine. I went back to the classic original one where I could open up my many different tabs from here as well as my searches on top. If you like to reverse to it or customize it, you could just go into your settings and go into apps and go into Safari. And right here where it says tabs, you can switch between three different designs. So the compact is a new one that Apple redesigned. When you scroll, it basically gives you a cleaner look and everything will pop up as you scroll up. Or you go to the bottom one, which was introduced on iOS 17 or 18. And then this one, the top one, has been the OG Classic one, which I think it's the best one. Now the Apple Wallet app, now it gives you the ability to search for stores, transactions, or dates. And then if you're somebody who subscribed to Apple Fitness Plus, by going to Fitness and going to Fitness Plus, if you scroll all the way to the very bottom, once it's loaded, you now have a plan preview setting where you could go in here and customize it to your own personal preference. Now, if you're ever in a phone call and then somebody gives you an incoming call while you're on the phone call, it will no longer like interrupt your entire screen telling you that another person is calling. You can now slide up and minimize their page instead of interrupting what you were just doing. And then if you have MP3 files that you downloaded online, if you long hold on one, some of these and then hit the up arrow and then tap the more, and if you look closely, it says you can now use it. You can now use it as ringtone. It just has to be under 30 seconds for it to work. But not bad. You don't no longer have to use GarageBand to create custom ringtones off your device. Additionally, if you like to automatically like tap on a phone number or disable the tap on the phone number, it'll actually call the person. If you go into your iPhone settings and we go into apps and we scroll down to phone, scrolling down, you'll see a tap recents to call. You can have this enabled or disabled. I prefer, personally prefer having it disabled to actually verify to I actually want to make a phone call instead of just click on the caller information. And then lastly, for Apple CarPlay, video streaming is now coming, which means so long as your vehicle is in park, you'll be able to stream stuff like on YouTube and such on your Apple TV head unit in your vehicle. Extremely useful for situations where you're just waiting for your spouse, sharing your car in a parking lot or something like that, and you just like to kill time. And soon, there'll also be support for scoreboard widgets where your CarPlay will be able to give you the real-time score of your favorite team that you're watching. And then the pinch and zoom on your maps will also be finally supported on supported vehicles. Not sure exactly what that means, but Apple is indeed working on improvements on Apple CarPlay. So hopefully we all now have the ability to pinch and zoom on Apple Maps. 
But other than that, there you guys have it. That is a complete rundown of amazing features that Apple didn't mention during their keynote and a lot of people overlooked. Let me know in the comment section which one of these was your personal favorite. And be sure to stick around for the complete video guide of over 100, actually I think it's 200 now, new features and settings. That is new for iOS 26 on the iPhone. I will be making that video shortly. Now, if you wish to watch more, maybe you'd like to see what's new on the Apple Watch side of things, I covered it in greater detail in that video. And then underneath that is the Apple TV, if you have one of those. Thank you so much for watching.